Emerson, good ball. Oh, we gotta get Son off. Son, like, I don't even know who to bring on. Son's just terrible. Is that an, if that's another goal from Son's mistake? Oh my days! Three nil, three nil, three nil, three nil. Disgraceful. These men are, brother. I'm fine now. I had enough. Ah, 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 ah. Big up X. Listen, Newcastle for Tottenham Hotspur nil. It was an absolute demolition, a destruction, a baptism under fire, a grown-up circumcision. It was painful. It was be beautiful. If you're a Newcastle fan, and an embarrassing, embarrassing day for Mickey Van de Ven, for Son for Ange Postacoglu and everybody involved in Tottenham. Two seasons running, they go to St. James's Park and uh, absolutely, comprehensively played off the park, battered and destroyed. And there will be a huge amount of embarrassment, a huge amount of frustration, a huge amount of anger from the Spurs fans, and rightfully so, because that in a... In a race you're in for top four to try and get that Champions League football to better your club next season. This is an horrendous result. And look, Newcastle are a good team when, when, when they turn up. They certainly have turned the corner again recently after what was a really shaky middle to their season. But overarching, that was... And I don't want to take nothing away from Newcastle. I thought Alexander Isak today was out of this world. Gordon and Harvey Barnes, that as a front three looks really dangerous, really worrying for rivals. I thought the midfield of obviously had Bruno Gamares in it. Just they didn't dominate the ball, but they dominated territories. They, when they had the ball, they were so much more potent, dangerous, precise with their actions. And defensively, I thought really strong, maybe the first 10, 15 minutes Spurs were sort of knocking on that door. But out, once the first goal went in, this became a one horse race. It really, really did. Only one team looked like winning. Only one team looked like scoring. And they did. They absolutely did. I thought the defending today, though, from Spurs, from corners was horrendous. The amount of free headers they allowed in their own box is crazy to me. It is. And we've heard Tottenham fans for weeks now tell us their defence. Some of them have done combined 11s with Arsenal, with the best defence in the league, and made arguments to have the goalkeeper and at least three defenders in that back line. And it makes no sense to me. You've conceded getting towards 30 goals more than Arsenal this season. You can't defend corners particularly well. And you want to pretend that your defensive unit is as good as them or even as good as Liverpool's or City's. It's astronomical, astronomical to me that Spurs fans have pushed this agenda. They've had a very good season. They've had a very good season. They may still make the Champions League. I still predict them to make the Champions League from this point, but they dropped down to fifth in the table right now. But an inquest must be had over today's game. There's no doubt about it. Before we go any further, remember we are today, as you can see, sponsored by our friends at Brick House Nutrition. You need to go and check out their pure organic superfood range now. I don't care what your diet looks like, what good food you're eating. This needs to be added. Whether it's you want better sleep, thicker hair, healthier organs, a stronger heart. You need the nutrients and micronutrients that Field of Greens gives you. It's suitable for you and the entire family. One scoop per day into a glass of water will dramatically improve so many elements of your life physically. Every single ingredient, as you can see, is organic. There is no added sugars, no added uh, factory-made chemicals, no crap, no crud, no crap inside any of these products whatsoever. I drink it every single day. It is generally, you know, guys, I hadn't had a hair transplant. My hair's never been this thick in my life. So much of it is down to uh, Brickhouse Nutrition. So go and check that out right now, or right now or at the end of the show by scanning the QR code or clicking the link in the live comment section or description below. And we'll get on to Newcastle a bit more in a minute, but I wanted to speak about a couple of Spurs players today. The first one I want to speak about is Basuma. Basuma, for me, is a Spurs flop, and they need to look at selling him in the summer. 
He had a good start to this campaign and this season. But it's two years now that he's been at Tottenham. And I think, listen, he didn't cost a lot of money. He only cost about 25, what, 25, 30 million. Maybe now we're seeing why he wasn't that expensive. I thought it was another game where he just ghosted, another game where he didn't impact the game in any way, shape or form. He was just a bystander. People at the beginning of the season genuinely, genuinely were pushing this notion that he was better than Rice. And now I'm not defending Rice because he plays for Arsenal. I'm talking, I, I, this is when he was still a West Ham player. I couldn't see it then. Can't see it now. This man is not out for the elite end of the spectrum for me. Certainly not Tottenham. Maybe it'll work at a different club with a different system. I thought he was absolutely horrendous today. A shrinking violet. He has ability, there's no doubt. But I, I just don't think he wants it. And I know that sounds like a cop-out excuse. What does that even mean, Terry? But I look at a player that doesn't really want to be involved. I look at a player that isn't willing to grab the game by the scruff of the neck and insert himself into the match. Technically, when things are going his way, he's good. There's no, there's no that denying that. But there's more to being a fo professional football player than just being good on the ball. Timo Werner, listen, if, if Spurs sign this man, Tottenham fans should all cut up their season tickets and refuse to give the club money. If they're not going to spend your money wisely, turn your, turn your back for a short space of time until you get what you want. Show tough love. This man is gash. This man is gash. He's awful. I do not understand what he brings to this Tottenham team. Doesn't really create. Doesn't score goals. Isn't up for the fight. He is not a Premier League level football player. I don't understand it. Awful today. Opportunity to score. Garbage in front of goal. Spurs fans should be fuming at the consideration of your club taking him on full time. And then I want to speak about Mickey van der Ven. And I want to speak about Mickey van der Ven as well because I'm not going to rewrite history. I think Mickey van der Ven is a very talented young defender. I think he's got the ability. What is he, 22 years old? Something like that. I think he's about to turn 23. He is talented. He has been excellent this year. His recovery speed is amazing. But again, I hear him getting overhyped too soon with the level people say that he's on. And to a point today where the commentators annoyed me, saying, oh, it's so unlucky that he slipped for them first two goals. He didn't slip involuntary. He slipped because he got twined. He slipped because he got sent to the shops. He was made to fall over. It's like a boxer getting knocked down and going, oh, it's so unfortunate they got knocked out. No, they got knocked out because he got caught. Both times, Isaac first and then Gordon. Gordon, by the way, I thought was excellent today as well. They absolutely roasted him. And then the third goal, I know he's got pace, but so has Alexander Isak. Why are you, how are you letting Isak have that much space to run into? How are you giving him that level of a head start? The, the, the overall defending from Van der Ven today was atrocious. And his two slips happened because his defending was poor. He overcommitted to both those challenges. And because he got switched up on and a change of direction, both times he fell over. Absolutely horrendous. And this is what I'm going to say to Spurs fans. It doesn't mean he's not going to be a top-class defender, but you have to criticize bad performances. You need to sharpen the steel. You do that via criticism, and he deserves it today because he was naive, stupid, clumsy, and was a big reason, a big, big reason that Tottenham lost because individually, very, very, very poor indeed. And Again, I, I see his name compared to so many other top defenders, and I'm just like, give him time to marinate, before, even before he, the, the cooking comes. Like, just give him time to marinate. You haven't got to rush these things. You haven't got to force these agendas. He's a very talented player, but today he, he, he was exposed in a big, big way. And as I say, overall, I want, I want to congratulate Newcastle. I want to praise New, uh, Newcastle United and Eddie Howe. One for 
this kind of turnaround they're on, like that the form has got a lot better. Eddie Howe looked a little bit cooked. He looks a little like his goose had been cooked. He looked as though he was losing the dressing room. It, the, the, the performances weren't coming. The way Newcastle have turned it around in recent weeks is has been excellent. And if this form would have maybe kicked in two or three weeks earlier, game weeks earlier this is, maybe they would still have a chance of making the top four. I don't think they will. It is between Villa and Spurs still, in my opinion. But stranger things in football have happened if, if there is a collapse from either of those other two teams. And at the moment, it, fifth place is not a guarantee of Champions League football due to the poor results midweek for every English team, but barring Aston Villa, ironically. So, yeah, as I say, it's, it's for me, Newcastle, congratulations. Well done for what they did. But Tottenham, some soul-searching needs to happen. Some heavy criticism needs to happen. That's 49 goals, by the way. 49 goals conceded this season. Absolutely horrendous. Horrendous. It really, really is poor, the amount of goals. And that, that, for me, is more important than the striking element being improved in the summer. And it's strange because I think a lot of Tottenham fans push this narrative that their defence and midfield is what's really strong. And it's the attack that needs to get better. And I'm not saying don't improve your attack, but 49 goals conceded is horrendous. And it needs to be, you, you, you've got to cut that by, uh, by this stage of the season, by at least anywhere around 20 goals, it needs to be cut by. If you want to be a serious team next year and not conceding 20 goals, that's a lot. It's a lot of improvement that's needed, both in the defensive structure and some individual players as well. And look, it's pretty much Spurs' strongest team that was out there today. I can't actually think of... I'm actually just going to go to the list of players that, 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 that were out. I mean, Sessegnon, Solomon, Richarlison potentially could be added to that mix. Outside, I mean, you've got to imagine this, right? That's all that's missing. Sessegnon and, and Solomon and, and, and Richarlison for Spurs. Lascelles, Livramento, Almiron, Botman, Lewis Miley, Callum Wilson, Joel Linton, Nick Pope, Trippier, Tonali, all out for Newcastle. And they put in that performance. They put in that performance. So, yeah, look, from, from my point of view, as I say, just horrendous day, a real horrendous day for Tottenham. Let's get to some of your super chats here. First one says Spurs were the, the game week nine champions, remember? Well, this is very much why the likes of... Um, this is very much why the likes of... Um, Sorry, I put the wrong thing in. I meant to write. I pasted something instead of just putting that in. I'm just bookmarking when the super chat started. This is why the likes of Kate said that people said Spurs fans saying they were going to win the league after nine games. I was saying, just please calm down. Our starting 11 can go toe to toe with anybody. I'm not sure about that. Um, thank you, effing Spurs. Woke up my daughter and pissed off my wife, ruined my night and ruined my weekend. Kate said she did not care uh, when we won with crap performances. Yeah, well, you better care now. Listen, I, I, Jerome, I, I feel you, mate. And, and I think this is where Spurs fans, again, praise your team for what it's done this year, but you've got to start thinking about next season as well and how you improve. And a lot of that is going to be individual players. And I don't think it's just get better than Werner. I think it's get better than Basuma. I think it's get better than Porro. I think you need to look at Romero. You have to look at something defensively if you're conceding this amount of goals, you can't just say, oh, they're all really good. It doesn't, it doesn't stack up for me. Uh, same crap as Fulham, back five and four in midfield. Just wait and counter to punish us. Ange needs to stop that high line. Uh, that third goal was crazy. How high everybody was. That's what Jerome says here. I'm going to save that super chat for when the panel comes on. Uh, I had X's watch along on throughout the game. Man was having kittens. Love you love to see it. Spurs were so flat and casual, no intent. Yeah, I felt. I think what I think they did have intent in the beginning, Ricky. But those two quick fire goals the, just knocked the stuffing out of them, and they couldn't go any further. Uh, speed demon Mickey Van der Ven becomes the first player in the Prem League history to be sat down twice in just three minutes. Do you know what's really interesting as well? I, I, I'm going to see what I want to wonder if more people are going to target him on that, just trying to quick, try and quick chop backs to see how well he does. Maybe that's a weakness in him. Maybe it's not. I, I, I might be completely overreaching with that. But 
all players have weaknesses. And when you're new to the league or you're, you're breaking through, sometimes you shine more because nobody knows your weaknesses yet. Maybe we found one today. Maybe we did. Maybe we didn't. Uh, feel bad for my fellow countryman, Van der Ven. Uh, he has uh, to cover the whole back line by himself. Please stop the high line, and we need him for the Euros. By the way, I don't think Ange is going to change his back. He's going to make your line. That's how he plays. He needs better personnel to do it. Uh, where is Deji? He has got the link. I don't know if he's coming on. Uh, if Man United wins today, Spurs at eight points lead. Spurs eight point lead with Paul City and Arsenal and Chelsea to come. United won't finish fourth. We're, we're not good enough to. This is the problem. We're not consistent enough to win enough games. I'd love to. I'd love to believe we could, but we, we we were really poor in our last three matches and walked away with two points. We actually should have walked away with nine. <laughs> like if we could just defend, we'd have walked away with nine points and it would have been different. But I don't think we'll do it, mate. If I'm being honest with you, I wish we. I, I hope I'm wrong. I hope you're right. Uh, don't flipping care about Champions League. I just want uh, to win and bring and bring me a goddamn trophy. Sick of getting embarrassed every single flipping season. Uh, these men are meant to be title deciders. Uh, not a chance. Looking forward to the North London derby. Come on, you gooners. Uh, Dan's Spurs 11 can compete with anyone except Newcastle. Yeah, he did say that. Uh, Chelsea will absolutely batter Spurs if Spurs play like that. What the F was that 90 minutes? I mean, in fairness, Spurs-Chelsea, with both playing like they are at the moment, will be an amazing game to watch. You are absolutely right about Basuma. Listen, I'm, 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 I'm not even being salty because Basuma's a player I wanted Man United to buy. But you look at him two years in, barring a few good months this year, what's he doing? Doesn't really create, doesn't dictate the play. Clearly isn't doing a good job stopping attacks and, and, and breaking up play and winning the ball back because of the amount of goals you're conceding. He's not shielding the back line very well. What does he do? I see for lo large parts of games, I feel like he just ghosts. I don't want to quite say hiding, but he doesn't impose himself at all. Uh, but, but, but the first game, 10 games, Terry. Uh, up the mighty mags. Congratulations, Mama Flossie. I bet you're happy with that. Expressions didn't care if Spurs lost 6-0 today. If you can, can stop Arsenal on the 28th, football gods. <laughs> Did he say that? <laughs> they were listening. <clears throat> the football gods were listening. Deji thinks Tottenham can finish higher than Arsenal. So did Will. Didn't Will Stewart say that? That ain't happening now, is it? I mean, is it actually mathematically possible still? It is with 11, 11 points, seven games. Yeah, it is still mathematically possible, but it ain't happening. It ain't happening at all. It ain't happening one little bit. Uh, Van der Ven uh, had a bad game today, will not deny it, but he is a very, very good defender. I will not let anyone crush his confidence because of one bad game. I hear that. He should be criticised. But uh, yeah, I will crush his confidence, no. Uh, there's a very good player in there. Uh, Son is just more um, mentally mature than Rashford, so incredibly overrated because he is a massive fan base. Kane masked his flaws and elevated his pedestal. I, listen, I think Son's a very good player. I think Son's another one who had a bad game today. And should be criticized for that. But I wouldn't rewrite the quality of Son. I think Son's an excellent player. Uh, that wallpaper is a classic with Spurs players upside down. They won't kick us, kick up a fuss until Arsenal beat them. And it will hit the fans if we win. Is what Sky King says. As a Newcastle fan, we always turn up in April and May. You certainly turned up today in Isak. Oh, what a player. Fun fact, we lost all our games in that coffee crap kit. That's crazy. That's cra Maybe it's like cursed, like Man United Grey kit. Uh, Fergie reincarnation, my ass. I remember that article, man. And this and that. Uh, what's the difference uh, from that in the 6-1? Listen, I'm not going to, again, lie. And just improved Spurs. They, 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 there is a better team and base there, but he needs to buy better players. That's what he needs now. Spurs fans will never succeed because they can't evaluate their squad without comparing it to Arsenal. Mm. Uh, Terry said he got twined showing your age. Yeah, that's, that's what we said when I was getting, getting twined up. That's what we used to say when I was a kid. You got twined today. I love that word. Uh, big up, Terry. Uh, give, a, give Spurs a break. They are still waiting for their best 11. You just wait, is what Jerome says here. Thank you, Jerome. Uh, Terry, get that Rayman on. 
maybe um, Rain Man on, maybe he can redo his calculations because, uh, again, because I think he missed an important variable, the history of Sossingham. Lol. Uh, and statue, no clue on the sidelines. He didn't do very much to so change it, did he? Isaac is definitely Henri-esque. Yeah, he's got elements of that to his game. He's nowhere near Omri's level, in my opinion. But what, what a season he's having. And if Newcastle really have to sell people in the summer, they can't do what Chelsea did and sell a hotel. Then, listen, there'll be a lot of clubs looking at Isak, especially if he can stay fit, because there's a player in there. There's a serious, serious, serious player. Uh, time to bring the panel out. Deji was actually backstage and then he disappeared. I don't know where he went, but maybe we'll be back in a few moments. But we've got to Alan on here. We've got Strasbourg C. We've got Matt, who's an Arsenal fan. That's welcome back. Uh, to the show, gents. Um, I want to go to Alan first of all. Mate, that was an absolute destruction of your team today. Talk <clears> to <throat> us. I just want to know where all the Spurs fans are. Is it just me, really? Wow. Um, hey, shout out to you, Alan. No, nah. no, look, look um, oh, that was the first 20 plus minutes was a bit of a dull game, not much yeah. going on. Um, like both teams trying to find each other out. Um, and then a crucial part of that game for me was literally that yellow card for Van der Ven literally got into his head and he was an absolute mess from that point onwards, all over the place. Defensively, we were shocking. Um, and he's got a, he literally has to get a better mental attitude than that on the pitch. If you were let a yellow card affect you like that, because he was awful after that. I still have Spurs. Oh, by the way, doing a watch along, a lot of Spurs fans are now starting to say, Angel, I'm not there yet. I think it's way too soon. But what I will say, there are Spurs fans that are not criticising these tactics. How deluded can you be? I never normally call fans, but how deluded can you sit and say that those tactics are worthy or you don't have to adapt and change? We were already 2-0 down. Yes, we're chasing the game, but you had three. Well, for that third goal, every single player was in the Newcastle half. One ball, and there was more long balls over the top the courts had before that. One ball over the top, 3-0 down. And again, it takes for the third goal to come in for Ange to make any changes Tactics were shocking. The type of play was bad. Newcastle have so many people out. Newcastle have, what, eight, nine first teamers out, something like that, and we got absolutely destroyed. Destroyed. After that first goal came in, it was ridiculous. Basuma again, what is he doing on that pitch? I called. I said last week or the week before when we done this and all that, he's got to go. He's not good enough. Yes, there are other, there's other crap that we've got to get rid of first, but he's got to go as well. That, look, that back line, that high line is not working. You need to adapt. If you drop that five or ten yards back, you then have to have a ball over the top. It's got to be inch perfect. That, that's how you stop these type of one balls over the top. You make it harder to do. But if we with that far, with, Isak could have just literally sat down, had a cup of tea, had a, had a crumpet or something, like that, and got back up and finished and scored. That's how bad we were. Son, again, I'm back Ange, but he's got to be held to account here. You're 3-0 down. You're still chasing the game. Yes, most people had a bad game. You then take your number nine, the person who is your top goal scorer off, you then take him off and put Brennan Johnson as the number nine. What is he smoking on that sideline? He's standing there with his hands in his pockets. He's got to do better. He has to change. He has to find a way, when you haven't got the tools to do the job, to get your team playing better, stop these high defeats, like these really big defeats. And then you progress when you get better players in over time, it adapts. But literally, no, it's the same. Rinse and repeat, and teams are starting to find this out. Luton, long ball over the top, caught us out time and time again. Not in the forest, done it. Newcastle have done it. And I said, if we continue to play like this against the bigger teams coming up, we are going to get smashed. If we do not change what we are doing, Arsenal, Man City, Liverpool, Chelsea are going to run right against us. And it's as simple as that. But no, people Maybe not Chelsea. work for Ange. Highline FC, fantastic. No, you've got to change. It's, it's starting to really piss me off. It really Alan, can I ask you something? Can I ask you something? Didn't we Sorry. play with a low? Didn't we play with a low block last year and we got rinsed as well? Yes, we're playing with a low block with a bad defence. So of course you're going to go. Here's our bad area. Attack us here. We we'll sit back. That, that's what you do with a high line with a good defence. If you drop that five or ten yards back. Van der Ven doesn't have to do as much chasing back. You probably save his hamstrings and all that. It's one of them. You need to literally adapt. You need to understand what you can and can't do. With a bad defence, you go attack here. With a good defence, you go, we don't need a defence. The best defence in the league, Arsenal, do they sit up on the, in the halfway line? Do they sit in the uh, opposing half the entire game? No, they don't. 
They're about five or 10 yards in their own half and all that. And when the attack comes, they know to drop back and the team comes back as one. Our the midfielder, Benton Court and Basuma today were both like, nah, Van der Ven's got it. Got an old ostrich over there. He can fucking get up and down the pitch all day long and all that. Cheat of Van der Ven. No, we'll let him do it all. Absolutely no, nowhere was that midfield. It's absolutely pathetic. Things have to change because what was good at the start of the season is not good now. It's just me being honest. And Spurs fans, I know that will watch this. You don't know Ange Ball. I don't give a fuck because at the moment, Ange Ball doesn't know Ange Ball. Seriously. I want, uh, Dan, I want to ask you a question about your defence. You've conceded 49 goals, which is huge. You rate your defenders very highly. I think in your combined 11 with Arsenal, who have the best defence in the league, yeah. including your goalkeeper, you have sort of four, three three or four of the five you, you put in as Spurs. So is it the system that's broken because the players are good enough or are the players not good enough and they're letting the system down? Because conceding 49 goals is horrendous. You need That needs to drop by about 20 goals next se season for you to go to that next level. How are you going to do that? Is it new defenders or is it a different system that's needed? No chance. It's just the players need to get more adjusted to the system. That, th like every time those balls in behind... We allow them to happen too many times in games, and they keep ending up to ending up costing us. Um, that ball behind is like it's, it, we we don't know what to do. I don't, I don't know if you know guys know that meme that the guy that stood there is like I can't move my legs. I don't know what to do. That's literally how we defend when the ball's being played in behind. We don't know what to do. We we're frozen, frozen, and I, I don't understand what it is. I know these defenders are good enough to defend, but every time, man, I don't know. I I can't grasp it. Why can't they just? follow the runner and they have to be working on this in the training ground because this is the way they play football this happens every game there's no way you they know, just see it. you know why they're not following the runner dan because they're not good enough they don't see it no. it's, it's, I, it's, so dan the only reason you don't follow your runner in football i know you've played is if you don't want to or you don't see it it's one of those two things it can't because no. give me a logical reason as to why they're not following their runners unless they're either too lazy to or they don't see the danger. What other reason could it be, mate? I don't know. Maybe it's an instruction. Maybe they're trying to play an offside trap. I couldn't an tell you. But I, I, so so maybe, if it's the instruction, I, 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 I know, I know these players are good enough to, to play. I know so these Dan, players are good Dan, enough Dan, to Dan, play. Dan, 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 I get that. So if they're good enough to defend and it's an instruction, then it's a system that's a problem then, yes? I, I don't know. I'm just making an assumption. I'm just putting up ideas. I, I don't have a clue. Well, what I'm saying, Daniel, and I ain't trying to catch you out. I'm trying to have a conversation with you here. If the players are really good, then I think it's that then you have to start you have to start calling out your manager because his system is the problem. If the system isn't a the problem, then you've got to call out the players. Conceding 49 goals is horrendous. And oh, yeah, so all the Man were, United, by the way. It is, and we're and we're and we're defend and we're awful defensively. It's that's a that's a problem I have with this. I'm looking at Spurs now as a team that wants to be a Champions League team and wants to progress. You got to start having hard conversations, and for me, I think there's an element of adaptation needed by your manager. But I also think you need better defenders. I don't think they're good enough. You definitely need a better midfielders. Basuma is not good enough, mm. and I think those. I think this is where Spurs fans need to sit down and go. Had a very good season based on expectations. You're in the running for a Champions League spot, which I don't think many people predicted you to do. But you've got to have honest conversations. You don't concede this amount of goals. Now, if the players are good enough, and it's more what. Alan's saying, and it's the system, then you have to criticise your manager and ask him to change things. But to be honest with you, Alan, back to your point, I can't see your manager changing anything. He seems someone that's very much set in his ways. It's, it's another thing. Let's talk about it's set in the ways, the whole less high up, less possession base. We had at one point 72% possession in that game. Fantastic. We were 2-0 down and they had six shots and four on target. We had four shots and none on target. Have possession all you like. If you're not, as soon as Newcastle won the ball high up, it was one pass in behind and it was a goal or it was a shot on target. With Spurs, we won the ball back high up. Benacore done it, Adoji done it, Madison done it. What it was was tap, 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 pass, turn back and all that, slow it right down. And we missed out on chances to catch them. It's just the type of football we're playing is so poor at the moment. Like it really is. And you have to be able to adapt in games. Alex Ferguson done it over time. Guardiola's changed the way he's played. He's gone from invert fullbacks to not invert fullbacks. Best managers in the world adapt. If you are seeing your team, literally, you set your team up how you want to in that game. You're 2-0 down. You then go, hold on. Maybe the way I'm playing is not correct. Let me adjust. 
No, you just stand there with your hands in your pockets, watching, getting a, the beautiful uh, sun has come out now. Finally, you can start getting a tan. That's fantastic. You just stand there looking up at the sun, it's beating down your face, hands in your pockets. What am I going to do today? Oh, no, we're free and all done. Let's make a change. It's just, I'm, I'm really, I'm so peed off at the moment. It's unreal. I'm so annoyed. I, I, I'm going to give back to somebody else because I've just continued. To no worries. I'm going to come back to young Daniel in a minute. We'll speak to Steve and Matt as well. But uh, Kate, um, talk to us about today's game. Please, what went wrong in your opinion? Where do improvements need to be made before your next game? I'm really calm. I don't understand where everyone's having a meltdown, right? And the fact of the matter is, I'm, I'm not... I, I'm, all these people that are criticising Ange, Alan, I'm including you in this. Everyone knew what we were getting when we got Ange, right? I didn't want him, but I was told he was, he was going to do great things. And for the first 10 games, he was praised by everyone. He is not going to change his system. That's the end of it. I'm sick to death of hearing people saying, he needs to change his system. It's so annoying. No, he's not going to change his system. If you don't like it, well, be Angel. It's as easy as that. It all boils down to the fact that we haven't got enough quality in our team to play this system. When he was at Celtic, he brought in the quality. He had the, um, uh, the striker, Kyogo, scored an absolute hat full of goals. Son isn't that player that's going to do that, right? So we let we haven't got a midfield general. Basuma said it last week, said it the week before. I'd sack, uh, I'd sell him in the summer and get someone better. We need a defensive midfielder. Yes, Ange doesn't play particularly with a defensive midfielder, but a player like Zuba Mendy is fantastic at going forward as well. That's the sort of person you need in this team. Poro is a good player. Udogi is a good player, but. Um, Van der Ven, Romero, they're all good players, but there's everyone in that team, Madders included, they all know they're going to start every game because we haven't got the quality in our squad for them to be concerned that if they have an off game, they're going to be dropped. So they all become a little bit complacent with it. There wasn't a single player on that pitch for us today that earned any sort of praise, not one. Van der Ven was awful, Romero awful. Madder's awful, Werner awful. They were all dreadful. Um, don't direct the anger at Ange. You know, this this is the system he's chose to play. Like I say, if you don't like it, then be Ange out. I, I don't even care. I like what I see and I can see we're going in the right place. But for the moment, we don't have the quality to play that system. And until we get to the summer, you're gonna you're probably gonna get this. We might lose the next three games. You know, we've got Arsenal, we've got Liverpool to come. We've got Man City. So what? You know, it's, it's the first season. I just think everyone needs to calm down. Our fan base is embarrassing. One week I've got Dan telling me that our, we've got the better eleven than Arsenal or that six of our players go in. The next, everyone's coming on crying that it's Angel. Calm down. See what ne Levy does. If you don't buy quality, then this will happen next year and Angel gets yeah. sacked. But he so, might well just so buy quality and we might actually see Angel ball played the way it should be played. Okay, but so, this is the reason why. No, what, you said about people coming in and saying Angel. I haven't said I'm Angel. I've said other people in my chat said Angel. You say you like what you see. What did you like in that 4 0 defeat today? I just have to ask then if you like what no, you I see. No, I like the system he's that he's talking about overall. But you can't, be, you can't be disingenuous one week and say you like the system and you like it, like the forward football, and then come on crying when we lose. Newcastle no, 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 was no, no, sensational no, no. today, and we no, were no, no, dog no. shit. I don't, say, I don't say I like this. Like, I say the system, the attacking football, the intent is there. But I've said since week one on here, and you go back, there's times where we are getting caught out. You have to adapt. You have to change. I we always adapt. Adapt. We <laughs> adapt. Don't you accept it. Or, or, or you're happy for the rest the of the season. A good manager. People well, say you've done it. You're people stuck say with you've done it. One second. People say you've done it in Scotland. Fantastic you've done it in Scotland. Let's be honest. If you've done it in Scotland, he went into the second best team with the most funds where you're – you're pretty much expected to do what you were doing in that uh, system anyway, where you beat teams below you. So, he's, of course, he's yeah. going to do better in Scotland. Yes, he transformed it. But if you're coming into this league, we're saying, look, we didn't know anything about him, but this is what we're expecting. If you don't know, you don't know what to expect then. And then when you see something going wrong, you sure have to change. You have to be able to adapt. You have to be able to change. If we're saying that nothing needs to change with this and you get the... Um, what you get to the point where you get better players, we then have to go. Our owners have to do the thing that we have never seen them do get the top quality players in that a manager needs to back a manager successfully for us to see the top, the top prospect or top product that we can see 
So we're going based on our owners. And then what? So if we don't get to that point, then it's just another manager by the wayside because not only yeah. are they, they're not only doing their job up top, but Andrew's not doing his job going, well, hold on. Conte got rinsed last season because he wouldn't change his setup. He was so defensive in the foot two in the middle, getting over run, and everyone was criticising Conte last season. But now because we can't he didn't have the defenders to play well. that system, mm. Alan. It's the same situation. He didn't have the players that suited mm. Conte's defensive system, right? That's a fact. He had dire in his But you can still but, criticize Ange. Yeah, but if you let me finish, but now Ange doesn't have the system to play the way he plays. So you've got to give him a chance. I don't care, you know, if Ange, for me, I think Ange is the right way forward. But to sit here and say he's got to change, he's got to change. He is not going to change. He said yeah. it in every interview he's ever done in Japan, in Scotland, in Australia. He's not going to change. If you don't like it, get on the Ange out train. But it's no yeah. point yeah. coming I, on here screaming I, about it every week. Ange out train is weird. Weird conversation. No, no. no, no I, I get where you guys are coming. I was want to go to young Daniel here before we speak to Steve. Um, obviously, awful game today. Um, Mickey van der Ven put on toast. Um Look like an ice skater today, Torval and Dean settings, All but right, it was a really right. let's not let's not make these jokes about one of the best center backs in the Premier League in the world this season. Let's not make these <laughs> oh, because... the world, no, the world. Ah! Because that's what... <laughs> there's no way you disagree with that. He's top in the five world in the easily, no. top five in the easily. You're no. overcooking this, Dan. You're He's not top five in the Prem. He's not top five in the Prem. No, I can name five center backs. No. Dan, you have to criticize something. This isn't just a you. You. Wait, this is the no, first time no you battered away from way. home. By the way, Fulham did this to you. No, just Brighton listen. Just this. listen to my point. Listen to my point. Okay. Let, 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 let him talk, please. Let him talk. S saying stuff like "Oh, he's been put on toast" is bad for his confidence. And our fan base, a lot of people from our fan base, are doing it. It's just one game. One game. He's been amazing all season. Just one game. Just one game. Can we please give him a break? For God's sake, man. One He's game, probably not watching, so don't worry about his confidence. I don't think he'd be watching right this No, season, but it, it, transfers social, it transfers through social media. He's going to get messages through, through Instagram now. And every, it, it gets there to the players. But Daniel, can I, just, Daniel, can I say something to you though about that? Right? What's Mickey van der Ven's confidence got to do with me? I don't want him to have good confidence. I'm he's, talking he's about not, he's not a Man United Tottenham defender. Fans, he's not a Man United defender. Tottenham, well. Tottenham fans okay, are making yeah. those jokes. Okay, yeah. Spurs fans making jokes about their own players is weird. I, I, I totally agree with you. But he did get rin rinsed today. Basuma yeah. got absolutely destroyed again in the midfield. What do you think went wrong? Everything. What went right is the question, Terry. Um, Basuma, people have figured out how to play against him, how to take him out of games. If you put someone on him, you don't allow him to get the space to turn and break the line. He can do absolutely nothing for you. And we have to adjust. Either we get a better DM that can deal with that pressure or I don't know what it is. The The problem is that you look at the bench and you look at who are we going to replace for Basuma and the player you see is Hoiberg. Hoiberg. There was about like three times in this game where he tried to play a ball over the top and it went out for a goal kick. I, I, I've lost absolute patience with this guy. When it comes to up front, when we've got Timo Werner as our striker, it's an absolute disgrace. The guy cannot finish to save his life. Yes, he's a good footballer overall, but what if her, no, the funny fine. thing is, I no. criticize Erling Haaland for, for not having overall play. Please. If you if you mix Erling Haaland and Timo Werner, you will make the, an excellent striker because Timo Werner has amazing build up play and he's good on the ball. But when he's in front of goal, the guy does not. Steve, come on, you know Timo I Werner. Say that is about Jesus Arsenal. Yeah, it's true. I, I agree with that. Jesus, that what you're saying is true. Jesus also knows the same exact situation. But at the end of the day, when you have an attacker that can attack, if we sign this guy permanently, next season, I will not be watching Tottenham week in, week out. If we sign Timo Werner permanently, I will not be watching Tottenham week in, week out. I will turn, tune in a couple of games, but I'll, I'll stop because there's no way that we can see this guy's performances and go, yeah, let's sign Timo Werner. I will lose absolutely all faith with this, faith with this club. If that happens, well, so, will you lose, can I ask you a quick question? Because I know that like a lot of Spurs fans, including yourself, have been heavily critical of Brennan Johnson. You've got obviously Timo Werner has come in. People are heavily critical. <laughs> your manager wanted these players, right? These are like your manager signings. Like, is, are you criticizing Ange because he is spot? He is cool. He's gone and got these players. It's at, it's on Ange, right? As well. When it, when it comes to when it comes to player ID, right. every every manager is not going to get every single player, right? We've even seen Pep Guardiola get a couple of players wrong. 
So he's gotten some amazing gems in Mickey van der Ven. He's signed amazing players like Vicario. And those have worked out, but there's there's other ones that just don't work out. And every player's not gonna have every manager's not gonna have a hundred percent ratio of talent ID. He's got very good talent ID, but it's not gonna be hundred percent. When it comes to Timo Werner, though, I I saw Timo Werner's transfer as a like a problem to a quick problem to a situation where we'd get him on a loan until the end of the season. He'll play okay on the wing. We needed a winger, and we're desperate in need of a winger. So I was like, okay, bring him in just until the end of the season. It's a little loan. If it doesn't work, send him back. If it works out, and he ends up being a good player. We buy, we buy him. It hasn't worked out. That's what I'm saying. It hasn't worked out. So now we send him back to Germany. But the fact that I can already tell you what's going to happen, Terry, because this club are PR geniuses. When you get the interviews of people asking Timo Werner, how have you find your time at Tottenham? And he goes, I love it. I wouldn't mind staying here. I would love it to stay here at Tottenham forever. And you see all the players going around like, I love Timo. His energy in the training room is amazing. I would love for Tottenham to sign him permanently. When players from our club are saying that, you know that it's a PR stunt. And they're getting the fans ready to sign Timo Werner. I'm telling you right now, this is what's going to end up happening. If that happens, it's not, it's a disgrace. But off the loan, I don't, I don't think the loan was a terrible deal. I think we needed a winger. He's fast. He's pacey. He brings something to the, something to the team. He's just not good enough to stay after yeah. the season at Tottenham Hospital Football Club. Yeah, I, I will say, I want to call you out, young Daniel. You know, I've got a lot of time for you, but you're really not helping his confidence when he sees this. It's not going to help him. <laughs> you're saying this, you know, you're not going to make him a better player by talking it's this way. You know? It's different. It's different, Terry. Because it's different. Because it's different. Mickey, Mickey also, Van der Ven has a future in football. Dan, I genuinely also, think he can become one of the best in the world. Dan, 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 also, also. It's funny how you and Steve, the two Americans, felt. I was also being sarcastic. It it it, it doesn't need a response. But yeah, the two Americans were well, serious. I don't. I don't think Americans hear sarcasm like English people. That's not a dig. That's just yes, how we no, are. No, very true. And yeah, I'm on the spectrum. Hear- I'm on the spectrum too, so it's already hard to do sarcasm. But yeah, <laughs> Wait, we're all on that spectrum, bro. We're all on that spectrum. I promise you that. Um, I'm I'm going to go to Steve, and then I'm going to go to super chats, and, and obviously a lot of them are about Tottenham. So we'll be getting Spurs fans' opinion. Steve, you must have been so proud though of Newcastle's performance today, mate. Uh, yeah, I did the I did the match review with Alan on his channel, and I yeah, I thought we were gonna lose, and I I was looking at okay, well let's consider if we won, and I said, and I remember saying it, Udoge, I like him a lot. Udinese last year at, at the wing back position, if he made a mistake, they had a back three that were able to yeah, cover nice. for a lot of the mistakes. Midfield as well did a good job. So, but. The problem is, is that when you play with that high line, you have less support next to you, behind you, and um, to the side of you. So you have three different areas. Because, right, if you play 4-3-3 and you play at the high line, it's just someone next to you. So that's the thing with Udoge on the first goal. This is the first goal. He got caught out in a 50-50, and then um, it, was a, it was a very, very good finish. Um, that was the – I forget if Isak – nah, Gordon scored the second one. Gordon scored – so it was the Isak finish. Look. This is also why um, I've been saying for the whole season, like the injuries thing, I hear it, but at the same time, can we do a little bit better? That's why I've been you know, critical of Eddie Howe and whatnot, because look at our back four. Look at our back four and goalkeeper. I said it on one of my group chats that like if Spurs don't score against our back four of Dubravka, who is terrible, he's either terrible or brilliant. You can't score against Emil Kraft. Fabian Scherr, fine. But Dan Byrne at left back and freaking Emil, like that back four. Very, 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 that is not our back four by any means. I'm sorry, but if Tottenham can't score against that back four, it might be time to move away from North London, bro. You might need a rebrand. You might need to. Football might not just be Tottenham's thing. I'm sorry. Yeah, you, yeah. Matt, Matt, I don't know. Matt, I don't if know why you, you're laughing. You know a lot about moving. You football. cannot score against our back four and our goalkeeper, then maybe football is just not for Tottenham Hotspur. I'm sorry. And you know what? That goes on Levy and that goes on players. And it's just, it's, bro, yeah. this is why I never say the injury thing as the main excuse as to why, because you can always do better. What we did today was we were comfortable. Fully comfortable, just like Atalanta were against Liverpool on Thursday, with not having a lot of the ball. 30, 70, Mm -hmm. 35, 65, that kind of thing. It was to press up high, win 50-50s, and just be competitive. Be competitive Mm -hmm. and don't allow them anything easy. Yeah. Um, What what, what I thought, thought, Steve, was really really interesting is as soon as your first goal went in, the we went for the fight, kill. The, 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 you guys did, and the fight dropped out of Spurs. It, it was almost yeah. coward. I mean, 
the fact that they've got a chicken on their badge is just ironic in this regard. It was, it was, a, it, was it was just, it was crazy. You said, come on, you, you said something a minute down, a minute ago, Dan, when Steve was talking about Adogi, you said something under your breath and I want to know what you said. He's world class. No, he's not. Adog please. Sorry. Ad 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 Adogi's Ad 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 world class. Explain that yeah. to us, please. I, I think he is world class. I think he gets into okay. the world 11 at left okay. back. Okay. Okay. Why I swear, well, it's I thought everything that, please. because I see explain people that. combine eleven. The doggies at left back. Then when I say it, I think explain he's the best it. left back. I think he's one of the top two easily best left backs in the world. Okay, but why? You mean why? Because of the quality I've seen him play with. He's amazing going forward. His dribbling is amazing. The way that he has got that ability to brush off defenders, get him off of me, get off of me. The way he just gets past, he glides past footballers. His defending is amazing as well. That's a question a lot of people had for him, being a left wing back coming into a back four. He's been able to hand, answer that question amazingly, defending amazingly this season through that left side. A lot of the chances that we've conceded, most of them haven't been through that left side. Most of them have been through the other side. So Dogi this season has been... And if you look at, I think, overall, one of the reasons why I say left back, it, he's a world class, is because how I define world class is best player in that position. Okay. The world, the world is lacking in like amazing, amazing left backs. So, in my opinion, he's easily into the top two best left backs in the world, and that's why I okay. think he's world class. So, so, Dan, I want to ask you some questions here. Is he better than Nesta Pinian? Uh, I think he is. Yeah. Okay. Better than Demarco? Yeah. God no. Better than Nuno Mendes? Yeah, you don't watch him enough, Dan. You don't okay. watch. Him. Yeah, to be fair, Steve, to be fair, Steve, I don't. Steve, I don't Steve, watch let them. Just, let me just do this with Dan, but I want to get Dan's opinions on this. Uh, Alex Grimaldo. That one's that maybe that one's like on par with, but I'm saying he's at, he's what, at that. Okay. Peak. Yeah, I'm just asking you. Okay, point. is he better than Mendy at Real Madrid? Yeah, I'd say so. Do you think he's better than Theo Hernandez? Um. The thing I, wasn't Theo Hernandez er, in, early in the season injured, so he's been injured. I, I'm pretty sure Theo Hernandez has been injured for a while now. That's why I wouldn't say no. Did, like right. No, maybe I'm confusing with someone else. Okay, but, you've also got Alfonso Davis. You think he's better than Alfonso Davis? That that's who it was. Alfonso Davis has been injured for a while now, and he hasn't even been performing well for. If you watch, uh, I watch a lot of Bundesliga. If you watch um, Bayern Munich, Alfonso Davis has been poor this season. He's been very poor this season. Yeah, I mean the whole the whole team has. I mean the whole team has been poor, but, yeah, but having a poor season because the club's having a poor season doesn't suddenly make. Like a doggy better than Alfonso Davis. The problem that you've got there, I, I wouldn't even say right now. He's, he's, like you think he's better than Andy Robertson? Yeah, but Andy Robertson has been injured for a while, so that's but another again, one. That being injured for like a, a few months in a season doesn't make a doggy better than them, bro. That's, that's weird. That's what, that's what I'm standing. I'm talking about this season. He's in the World Eleven and at left back. So those players have been injured, so you can't take them to account for this season being in the World Eleven. No, I, still just, think, I still think Udogi offers more than Andy Robertson. Hang on a minute, hang on a minute, hang on a minute, right? Harry Kane, world class, right? Yeah. If he spent six months out injured, and you had to pick a World Eleven at the end of the season, you tell me you still you you still bring Harry Kane, wouldn't you? Oh, but he still offered the numbers, even though he was injured for a long period of time. He no, still put the still, numbers. He was still bringing it like Dan I, saying that Udogi is the top two left backs in world football. I think I think it's a big stretch, bro. I, I genuinely believe that. And I think that he will be or not even arguably number one in a couple of years. In a couple of years, everybody will be like, this guy is clear of everybody else. He top, won't be top, and then... <laughs> nah, Yeah. Yeah, you won't be saying, <laughs> you won't you be saying it, Dan, because it'll, it'll, it'll be gone from first. I want to go to some of these super chats here because I don't want to disrespect the, the viewers who have, have super chatted and put their money in. And we'll, we'll, we'll debate some of these on the panel. Well, not all of them, but we'll debate <laughs> about some of them. Uh, African... Zinchenko at left back. Uh, when we are having, when are we having this conversation? This came earlier from uh, from Twinny, who said this about Adogi. Um, interesting. I didn't think yeah, he had poor game today. Uh, mad respect to you, Terry. We will rise again. Glory, glory, Man United. I hope so, brother. I really, really do. Uh, and clogged the loo, got packed and uh, point uh, packed and potioned. Potion. Potion. <laughs> Uh, D Wizzy is here. Sup, young Daniel, is what Aya says. Uh, and this is why people are saying I don't turn up when we lose. <laughs> uh, Van der Ven is on a desert island. Mad tactics, but we got sent to the shops with a shopping list. <laughs> uh, Newcastle fan here. Spurs have good players, uh, but the guy in the guy in midfield, Bazuma, uh, gives 
uh, gave us that game. He doesn't control, neither cares. Very poor and irresponsible. Yeah, listen, I still think back to those calls at the beginning, not even the beginning of the season, in the summer, when people were saying that, like, he is clear that people said, a Declan Rice, I still can't fathom why people thought that. I thought he was better than he's showing he is, but saying he's clear of Rice is crazy. Uh, Andrew's getting praise for making Spurs a fifth-place team is nasty work. People told me he's better than Arteta after 10 games. But some people said he was a new Fergie after 10 games. It, honestly... Those headlines are – that's not even a dig at Spurs. That shit is crazy. And the worst headline I saw was he's totally fixed Spurs and, and they're not Spursy anymore. I, I just find things like that are just gaslighting fans. You know, you should never say things like that. Um, I'm hearing all this, uh, Van der Ven slander, but where was Romero? Again, every game, it's always uh, Van der Ven making clearances and, and tracking runs. Romero does not – listen, I think Romero is a player you guys have potentially got to look to move on as well. Um, you got again, really? well, well, Dan, but this is why I say you say really. You said Mickey van der Ven is one of the best in the league, one of the best in the world. You said you've got the second best left back in the world. You rate Poro highly, and a lot of fans like you at Spurs say that Romero is better than Saliba. If that's the case, why have you conceded 49 goals? The system is very open, but I, what's supposed to happen is that we're supposed the way that we play is we are the way that we play is we go into games and we say we're going to score more goals than you that's angible that's angible yes. so we're going to allow you, a lot of chances yeah, so if, if any, if, if, say, just... say what you've just said is true damn any spurs fan worth their salt that's except if they believe your point of view that's accepting that is crazy no team has ever won a major trophy by playing we're going to outscore you football no one you you have that's every so single every single team well then you're better off you, you, then you've got to listen to kate if that's what you believe you should not be supporting your manager genuinely I, I, because there is, because, but you can't. How can you support a manager that you believe has a system that has never won a major trophy? Every single great manager, every single top winning team ever builds their foundation on not conceding, and then off that you grow and flourish. You can't. The the, the, the I I think what you're doing here, Daniel, personally, right. is you are defending your players, and I think I, I, there's elements you're right. You have got an open style, and I think adjustments are probably needed. But I think it's because you don't have good enough players. You're not. You're no more open. The Man City are. You're no more high of a lion than Liverpool are. Your players are just not as good. You're overrating yeah, your players, yeah. in my personal opinion, mate. Well, well, great debate. Yeah, go, go on. on. Uh, no, and we'll come back. So there's a lot more to get through here. Sorry. After eight wins, two man of the matches at the start of the season, Spurs fans said we're going to win the league. Andrew's better than Froteta. Top three will be at Spurs. Yeah, crazy calls when you look back now. Deji and Will can never dare compare our te uh, Arsenal's defence to Spurs' defence again. They've conceded double, almost double the amount of goals. Where are these cowards? I won't say they're cowards. Will, Will and Deji didn't confirm they were coming on, so it isn't like they've backed out. A uh, question for Dan. What kind of change for the summer? Player for player swaps. Like I would say we got to look for a replacement for Basuma. He's not been a to par for the first 10 games of the season. So we need to start looking for competition for places. We need to start looking for wingers that are competent, that actually have a final ball, that can actually put the ball in the back of the net. And um, a lot of people are making a shout that Son at striker is in it. And I kind of hear it. Uh, he's playing with his back to go a lot. I'm not saying get a replacement for him. I'm just saying get someone that could like challenge him, that would be behind him and say, yo, I'm going to give you a trouble for your position. And I know people are going to say Richarlison, but I'd rather just send them off to Saudi in summer. I'd rather send them off to Saudi in summer. I think his time is done at Tottenham. Um, I'd rather just look for a young replacement striker that could give Son a little bit of a challenge. So, yeah, midfielder and two wingers and a possible backup striker. Makes sense. Um, this super chat here from Nikhil says, as an Arsenal fan, I agree with Kate's assessment of, of sorry, on Zubamendi. Uh, having watched him in La Liga, I believe even we were trying to sign him in the January transfer window, can play either six or eight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Zubamendi. Yeah, nice. Zubamendi. Zubamendi looks excellent. Uh, <clears throat> Ange is great, uh, but cannot access the top tier. The list of defenders that can defend in a system like, like that to a championship level um, are extremely exclusive and non-existent. I don't even think Saliba and VVD are suited to it. That could be where the fuck that, that could be where the, 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 the limitation comes. If you can't get players that are good enough to play that system to make it fruitful that's where you, you sometimes go i actually think that's one of the reasons why brighton concede so many goals and don't win enough games because zerby's trying to play a style of football that probably needs better football players to really get the optimum best out of it and but we're in that era of football now you don't get 
I know nobody wants a Sam Allardyce to come back, but someone like Sam Allardyce looks at it from the lens of, well, this is what I've got, so this is how I'm going to play. To a certain degree, Moyes is like that. Um, but yeah, great, great super chat, that, my friend. Uh, Dan, do you still think Spurs have a better 11 than Arsenal? Yeah, I've already said this. Yes, <laughs> player for player, player. Oh, my God. I say this every time and everybody gets... My genuine I opinion is why. Player, player by player, yes. But the team needs to gel. The team needs to get more <laughs> used to the system for us to be a better yes, team than Arsenal. We're not a better team sorry, than Terry, Arsenal. Terry, can I, can I take this kid to Arsenal. court for a second? So yes, go on. on so I ain't been here for a while, but the last time I talked about Tottenham, I told you what Tottenham is. They're the, they're the team who holds their girlfriend's hair while she's sucking off another person. That is Tottenham. So I'm going to say that again. Now, now, Dan... No, did he? Correct me if I'm wrong. A while back, you said the only team who could challenge City was Tottenham next season. Would you respond to that now after seeing what your team's doing? Well, this is I what still, you said. I, I still, don't know if I it's been think... addressed since, but this is what you said with Chess. I still, I still and where's your little brother in arms, Mr. Ben Mitchell? Where's he been? The guy who said he was going to win the title. Where is he, man? Yeah, he quit. He you're quit. you're, you're yeah. the only team he's going to he's going to go toe to toe with City next year, right? No disrespect to Ben, but I don't think I've been on a panel with him. I don't, who's who's not Ben? Know, no, 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 Harry, Mr. Harry, ben Harry. He, he, no, you, well, don't, you, you won't see you standards, but the people yeah, from it he does, he does look like the old school Ben Mitchell, actually. Yeah, he yeah, does, yeah. so yeah, but so yeah, respond to that, please, Dan. Then we'll, yeah, no, yeah, I, I still think we could challenge City next season. I, um, I think Arsenal can also challenge. But um, I think that if we improve the way that I'm saying in the summer, I think it's very possible for us to challenge Arsenal next season. And it's it's I still said I said it's down to see what Liverpool will do in the summer if they're going to challenge as well. Maybe they fall off after clock. Maybe they get a great manager. Talk about Liverpool and Arsenal. You Gosh, said the I'm only look, I'm, I'm team that was going to challenge you City said... was you. Nobody no, else but that. you. You said that Liverpool had to have a rebuild. Your wording is very clever. Your wording is very nah, clever. No, 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 no. We can go back. To, Terry can go back and find that stream. Find the yeah. I did not see You like said that. the only team was going to be you to go toe-to-toe -to -toe against City. And I, I remember, because I watched that stream, and I was like, this kid needs to be taken to juvenile prison for saying stuff like that. <laughs> Like, I don't know. Maybe Terry needs to like get you under his wing and give him the apprenticeship or something because you've got a lot to learn like about football. There's no chance That's that you're going toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, Man City next season, especially when you've got teams like Liverpool who are um, challenging right now, Arsenal challenging. Did you obviously and then didn't you, hear my point you went, that I made. You, you bashed Bayern Munich over the head over signing the Romanian Romanian Carl Drago. The guy didn't even play. And I don't want to hear anyone because tell me that he's used to playing a free back. A defender is a defender. A defender's job is to defend. It don't matter if it's in a free back. It doesn't matter if he's playing in a four back. Why isn't that guy playing? Because we've got two better centre backs. No, you haven't. Forty nine goals. Yes, we do. Yes, we 49 do. Forty nine goals. And you're saying that you're saying Mickey Van Der Ven is a world class player. The guy's played twenty one games, and you're calling a player who's played twenty one games Van Der Ven. a world class Dungy. player. Said You're saying, doggy, not no, Van but you said Vic, Mickey Van der Ven is probably top five best centre backs in the league, right? Yeah. What yeah. after twenty one yeah. games, is that is that what we've come to this season? You I lot said. disrespect players from the past by saying players like Mickey Van der Ven is world class after twenty one games. Do so you even know what world class than, means? So name, me, so name me five better. Yes, I, I literally explained what my definition of world class is. Everybody has a different definition. It doesn't matter. No, 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 no. Not your definition. 11, world class players. You, have you seen 11. world class players in the past? And you're trying to tell me that Mickey Van, uh, well, Mickey Van Der Ven. Yeah, this is, let me just jump I'm in for a second. This, this is, I know everyone's got a slightly different definition of world class, but this is why words matter and definitions matter. Because... We could, I could invent, I could, I could create a definition of world class and then fit anyone I want into it if I just create a definition. Like that's why there needs, that's why conversations around what makes you world class has to happen. And you're being very clever, young, young, young Daniel. You're basing it all on like a very small window in terms of this season. That doesn't, Van der Ven could have a better season than the best centre back in the world. Doesn't make him better. But yeah, I didn't say Van der Ven. I didn't say Van der Ven. It's like six, I, don't know. I mean, they are they are top of the league right now, Man City. But even if they don't win the league this year, they could still be the best team in the world. They just maybe didn't have the best season. They could still be the best team. This is what happens in sport at times. Um, look, I want to go to some more of these super chats, and I want to get Daryl's opinion. Have a chat with Matt as well. Um, this here says uh, there is being delusional and there is being delusional. Dan is the latter. Three Tottenham defenders in a combined 11 with Arsenal. I mean, you also... So I want to ask you another question. I don't, I don't want to feel like I'm dunking on that. I want to get your opinion. You think 
Vicario is world class, yes? Mm, yeah, yeah. Okay, so Vic he, Vicario world, world class, Nogi world. world class, Van der Ven, one of the best in the world. I assume you think Romero is world class. No, and I'll explain to you why. Romero, okay. for me... I, 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 I didn't want to go into a big deep debate. I was only asking because you rate these guys as either top elite to world class. And the only thing, that, the word that keeps popping into my head is 49. Can't get the word 49 out of my head. Terry, okay, I'm this 49 man, goes. Man, man, this 40, man. wait, 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 wait. wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. You're this just saying it's world class. Spurs only have one potential world class player in their squad, and it's Son. Only one potential for a debate. That's it. Done. Move on. This is embarrassing. Come on. Done. Wait, wait. Let me, your let team's me, full of losers. You've got one man. guy in your team who's won a cup in wait, wait, English wait. football, yeah, uh, and that no, is it. Think about the forty-nine let, let goals me, and explain it to me because me it's all not making sense. My brain don't work. Because My brain don't work on this. People say forty-nine goals and it's like wow, but there's only four teams that's conceded less goals than us. I saw a stat yesterday, Dan, and every Dan, time somebody Dan, says forty-nine Dan, goals, I'm like, wow, we Dan, must be the worst Dan, team in the league. Dan, but only four Dan. teams. Dan, but you're not again. You're taking. You're, you're not looking at the context. So when you look at Man United, you've conceded more than us, but we're awful, and we are not claiming to have a team full of world class to top class defenders and goalkeepers. You look at all the teams that have conceded similar or more. None of their fan base are saying that they've got the top two, top top best, one of the best left backs in the world, two of the best centre backs in the world, one of the best goalkeepers in the world, a top class right back. We're not making those claims having conceded that amount of goals. Terry. That's the point that's being made here. You're you're not you're not hearing what the criticism is of Tottenham. Like you said earlier on in the season, that you think you have the best midfield barring Man City in the league. If you had the best midfield and you had a defence as good as you're claiming, you would not have conceded 49 goals. It just would never have happened because be the, teams with, the teams with better midfields and better defenders than you have conceded between 15 to 20 goals less than you. That statement I made was considering the first 10 games of the season. Since then, our midfield has completely fallen off. But what I, what I have to say about the Man United thing is you guys play a different system than us. Ten Hag is a coward. A, a coward. So he doesn't want to play how he plays football. He's literally gone out and said, we are playing because we don't have the type of players. So you guys are sitting deep and you guys still only have conceded a little bit less goals than us. We're playing more open. That's a style of play that we play. That's our tactics. That's our system. So mm -hmm. of course, we're going to concede more goals than you when you sit back all game. It's just the way that... But you're still not listening. The teams that genuinely have top class to world class defenders also play very open football where they're susceptible to counterattacks but they can see considerably less than you. That's why the question is, how can your players and team have individuals as good as those other top teams that concede so much more? That question is still not being answered. Don't compare yourself to Man United. We are crap this season. But you can yeah, see them as many as us when you've that's got lots of world-class players. Doesn't make sense. Let's just move on to some more Super Chats here. First one says, Spurs have had the same amount of goals today. Sorry, have... The same amount of goals today as Arsenal have in 2024. Uh, the fact people are putting Spurs defenders on a higher pedestal than Arsenal's defence. Uh, Dan, Dan Luz, you know, uh, is what's being said here. Uh, Arsenal have more goals scored and less goals conceded than Spurs, but somehow their attackers, midfield and defenders are better. Lol. It just doesn't add up. The maths don't math. Uh, Adogi world class uh, in the Premier League. There is a lack of left backs. But the world, um, you have seen Grimaldo, who is a number one uh, assist in a uh, big match, sorry, uh, big match uh, player compared to him. You can't be world class in the Premier League and not world class out of it. You're either world class or you're world, world class means it's, you know, you could say he's one of the best in the Prem this season. I don't think that's a, a crazy quote. You can't be world class in one league, but not world class in another. You're either world class or you're not, in my opinion. Stop, 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 little Dan. You are a disgrace to Spurs and American football, uh, not soccer, by the way, fans. He's only been. It's just a joke there. If we can figure out how to convert delusional del delusion to energy, Dan and Don uh, could power the world. Oh, well. on a trouble, trouble. <laughs> uh, Dio's here. What are you here to say today, mate? Uh, no, no. I just I, I I came on when I heard when I heard what Dan. I was watching. I I didn't want to come on, but then I I heard Dan say say what he said, and I was like, you need to realize that you you might have talent in your team like there's potential in each of those individual players but your your coach is not changing his ways and is not going to change his ways and if those players cannot live up to that potential to play the style that Ange wants the club is not going to be successful it's that simple
There's no, there's no maths about it. It's like Ange has a style and needs the right players to play that style, right? So, for example, you're talking about uh, how you say you have like world class defenders. You're, you know, one of the best in the league. Okay, let's do the maths. You say you play expansive open football. Arsenal plays expansive open football. <clears throat> Arsenal plays a high press. Saliba and, and uh, Gabriel sometimes are in the other half, literally for 25 minutes throughout the whole game, in the other half of the other team. And we've only conceded four goals since January. Playing the same style of expansive football that Tottenham is playing, but Tottenham conceded four in one game. So do you understand the difference when, I'm saying, when, when everybody's trying to explain to you about whether or not your excuse that you play expansive football is why you concede is, is, not, is not an excuse. Because the yeah. other teams that are playing expansive football, hold on, high pressing, just like you, high line for life, just like you, and are conceding less goals, right? So yeah. the question is, what is it that you guys are doing wrong or that Ange is doing wrong? It's either he doesn't have the personnel to play that style, which is why it is going wrong, which means if he doesn't have the right personnel, it means that they're not world-class. They're not top, they're not top-notch because other teams are doing exactly what you're doing and not conceding. Right. So it simply it's means different. that it's no, it simply We're, means either that or Angie's system is flawed. And if his system is flawed and players cannot play in that system, what needs to happen is you need to get a new coach. You need to so get on Ange. Yeah. Yeah. So so that's it's 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 either or you you, you can't say Ange is the greatest coach, world class, the players are world class. We play expansive football like it's unique to Tottenham. It's not unique to Tottenham. Many teams in the world play 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 that style, and a lot of them that play that style. Are, are conceding less goals than, than you've conceded so far. So that's, that's, that's why, for that's those teams, it's not the now. first year. For the, for those teams that you're bringing up, it's not the first year that they're in a process and the players are getting adjusted yeah. to the system. It's that's still, why I always say you have to take that still, into account. These players are getting used to the system. Dan, I think you're, I'll get your right. You're, you're right to a degree. But if you look, if you take Arteta as an example, you take even Pep at Man City, time is key, but it was also about them buying better players and improving that squad. So yeah. every one of those teams that's had longer, they haven't kept the squad they inherited. They've bought better players. And this is the, the point I'm making, is that I think, and I respect this, and I'll do one, one another bit, give a bit of stick to Dan, but like we will be, we will be as respectful as we can. He is 15, and, and we, you know, I don't well, mean that. I, I, can take, I can take it to no, him. No, just let me finish talking, and I know you can take it, and I'm not, saying, not trying to condescend to you, but obviously, we, 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 you know, we're speaking to you with, with respect. All the points you're making, I understand where you're coming from, and I, I get your loyalty to Tottenham, and I get your loyalty to your players, but I do think you're off here in a sense of, yes, it's going to take Ange time to get his team together, but it's more to do with him getting better players, and he will do that, as opposed to the players getting used to it. I, yeah, I, there, I, there's, a little, there's a little element of that. I want to get through the rest of these stupid chats, because I've, I've got another show to do after this, and I want to get through these. Sorry, guys. Uh, 100% Angie's fault. So many flaws today. Trying to play one touch football with the wrong players and ridiculous high line. Uh, thank you, Franks. I uh, feel sorry for Spurs fans like Kate. Not delusional. Um, not delusional like Fan, Will, and Deji. Mickey can't defend your service. Now, Mickey, look, Mickey Van Der Ven can defend. He, he had a bad, I'm going to, I've said it all stream. He had a bad game today, but I do think there's a class defender in there, Uche. I think there is. Terry, it's a uh, joke. They're playing with his name. It's Mickey Van Der Ven, and they're trying to say Mickey can defend. Oh, how funny! Ha ha. ha. That's yeah, but in fairness, Dan, I've, I've seen what I would say that is pretty. I find that banter a little like, but yeah, I've seen you do it. About, I've seen you do it about other clubs as well, right. brother. You got you can't. I don't know if they say this in the states, but we say this here in England. If you can't take it, you shouldn't give it. Do you know what don't I mean? Don't throw stones. I don't make glass. those bad jokes. I don't make those terrible jokes. So oh, I've seen some. Oh, Oh, you people pass. But calling like, someone fraud, fraud Tessa, you know, or or Arsenal, but spelling it like a bum is it all that stuff. Like, what, what's one of them about my club? Like, manure, as in like manure. It's sort of like, wow, <laughs> it's so crazy. Um, I think the difference, uh, there's a difference between change and adjust, and needs to adjust his system, especially during games where things aren't going well. Um, but can, can, look, I, I I agree with what Alan said. Equally, I get where Kate's coming from. I don't think he will. And that's where hey, it becomes right. maybe a, a bit of a paradox. Uh, Timo Werner is definitely a Daniel Levy signing, a lone player. Just see how it goes. Thank you. But go back to Germany. Uh, D. Mizzy is out of his mind. He's clueless and embarrassing. Best defense in the Premier League. I love young Daniel. Uh, the fact that Spurs fans uh, were comparing their back line to Saliba 
and Gabrielle is unreal. Uh, we'll see. The sounds. Ter- Terry, we'll see. Well, I mean, a couple days, a couple weeks, North London derby, White Hart Lane. We'll see. I'll come back. We will see about the Saliba, Gabriel, we'll Romero. Van Van the football we, gods I, are listening to you. There. The uh, listen, the <laughs> gods can listen to me. They Ayo, can listen to me. Facts. We will be here. We will be here, and we will see what happens. And we'll see if these people oh, keep me. the same energy, and we'll see what happens. That's all I'm going to say. Football gods can hear that. Football gods can do whatever they want to do. But let's see what happens. It's not something Dolby Whitehall Lane. Let's Ooh. see if they can keep the same Al- energy. Alberto here says the doggy wouldn't be playing for Spurs if that was the case. Uh, if he was in the top two left backs in the world he, uh, and linked else, um, he'd be somewhere else by now. Yeah, I agree. Been linked uh, to Madrid. Spurs, sorry, Steve is doing Lee Evans uh, impressions because Dan is talking nonsense. I don't know who that brother is. So He's a great, com- he's a great UK comedian. Um, a legend comedian. Dan is Dan. I'm begging you to stop rating current young players on perceived future potential. I think we, I think he will be, uh, used to be too often with Adogi and Van der Ven. Uh, thank I you, Garrett. Uh, Terry, uh, let me tell you center backs better than Van der Ven. Uh, Diaz, Stones, Van Dyke, Konate, Saliba, Gabriel, even Ake is a better defender than Van der Ven. Or Romero, so not in the top five. Dan, take some time off and read a dictionary. Uh, I like that young Dan. No, did he? <laughs> um, I need for that. <laughs> you remind you remind me of my young self when I thought uh, the Arsenal 2013-14 squad with Arteta with Arteta in it was better than Chelsea, United, and and City. <laughs> um, Everton have conceded 42 goals, so their defence must also be world class. <laughs> uh, this guy, Dan, uh, saying he would fit more Spurs players into uh, an Arsenal Academy squad uh, as and to say their defenders are better. Please, Dan, tell us your combined 11. We have done this on many shows and yes. we're not going through it again because it is painful to listen to. No disrespect, young man. It just is. Uh, Spurs has plenty of good midfielders, but no world class like Bruno Gamarish. Bruno Gamarish is not world class. No, he's not world class. Very, very, very good player. Very good, very very good, good player. player. And if Man City buy him, maybe he could get there. Yeah. Maybe. maybe. Five teams have conceded less, conceded the same as three others. Thank you, bro. Uh, this year from K- 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 uh, Cassie that says, Dan, uh, to say you would put more players. Um, more players into a combined 11 with Arsenal and Spurs is laughable. Please name your combined 11. Not sure if Kate has, has heard it. Um, we don't need to. No, we don't need to do it. We don't need it. Uh, young Dan, more like young, <laughs> young denial. <laughs> <laughs> That's very funny. Um, imagine, imagine 15 year old supporting a crap club. Poor guy. I do feel bad for Dan in that. Last club. year was worse. Uh, new players will also have to take time to learn the system. Yes, Bayern Leverkusen, Bayern Leverkusen, though. One season, new coach. So, so there's there's studies. I mean, not studies. There's cases to be made here. If you keep on talking about, oh, you know what? A hey, the system and this and that and Ange needs time and the players need to blend. Bayern Leverkusen is a good example. Okay, out of the blue. No, no, hold on, hold on. Out of the blue. Go on, go on, go on. New coach bought the players he needed, fixed a few things in the team. He's flying in the Bundesliga. Mm-hmm. Now, you may not want to rate the Bundesliga, but I'm just saying that these things can happen. So my point okay. is, it's either Ange is able to tweak his game in gameplay, but the players he has, knowing what he needs to do, getting the best out of them. After If you score first, stop playing the high line. Drop mm-hmm. to a mid-block. But what, he won't do what, that. So, I've got something. Okay, something to say about that. Two eights. Two eights. What does that mean to you? Two eight. If I, two eights together, what does that mean to you? 16. 16. 16. No, 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 no. 2-8. 2-8. 2-8. 2-8. 2-8. 2-8. 2-8. 2-8. 2-8. 2-8. 2-8. 2-8. 2-8. 2-8. 2-8. 2-8. 2-8. 2-8. 2-8
But then it would be Ben White, Saliba, Gabriel, and I'd put a doggie in the team. I would, I'd, based on this season. If I do it based on this season, the midfield yeah. is going to be Declan Rice, Odegaard, and I'll put Madison in there as well. I think he's had a good season. I'd do that. Or do you know what? I, I'm just going to put Madison in there. I'm going to be nice, right? Then on the then on the right, it's going to be Saka. Then up front, it's going to be Kai Havertz. And then on the left, I'd put Son. Do that's not say Yeah, I kind of agree with that. Yeah. That's what I would do this. That's what I would do based on this season. No, because yeah, I thought yeah. you were saying Kai Havertz over Son. That's why I put the face. I thought you were saying Kai Havertz no, I, over Son. I, I, I'll, I'll keep Son in the team. That's what I would do. For a, a, a few Spurs players gets in, but no more than that, in my opinion. Uh, Super Chat here says, go easy on Dan. He's 15 and only thing he knows is Harry Kane's golden era. The kid doesn't know what he signed up for by becoming his first fan. I can't wait, Danny. Maybe in 10 years, you'll be on the terrace and you'll be like, oh, the things I said when I was younger. I guarantee that that happens. I bet you'll look back and go, oh, do you know what's really funny as well? Because I've got like nieces and nephews that are sort of your age up until their early 20s. And the things they say and do, I always look back now and go, oh my God, I used to behave like that. It happens. <laughs> it will happen to everybody. It really will. Uh, AMT here says, uh, Isak turned uh, Van der Ven for the goal he slipped. Is that an advantage for future attackers? I think it's something they're going to try again. Um, it doesn't mean it's a weakness in his game because it happened twice in two minutes. But you people are going to start trying that chop back against him now. They're going to try to just see what happens. But there we and, go. And, and by the way, just real quick on that, what does Anthony Gordon do so well? That little cut left, cut right shoot. So he's done that before to other players. Man City, we did the same, we did the same thing against Man City at St. James's mm. Park this season when we lost 3-2. We scored two goals on the counter in the space of like three minutes. Both on the left, boom, boom. So we do that, and it was all, it was it was it was a case of uh, Terry. We just, Terry, yeah. Uh, can I call you out, Terry? Can I call you out? Oh my! Yeah, of course you can. Of course you can. Because last match, we spent half of the show talking about James Madison punching a footballer, and not a single minute we've talked about fourteen fouls for Newcastle and not a single yellow card. Should have been more, oh, by the way. You can hold there that. Five. There you should have been five that. yellow. There should those five more fouls that they didn't call. Not a single yellow card was given. And this is also something I forgot to say about this particular Hang on a minute. You People calling me excuses? I, I want a referee. What are you calling me out for? No, because, T Terry, last game, respectfully, mm. we talked half of the show about the Madison incident. Not a single minute. Did the yeah, yeah, Newcastle I mean, players I, I, punch your players? Yeah. <laughs> it, it was it was a case of, like, we were through on goal, and then they would shove us. Stick the contact sport, of our players. Yeah. No, no, no. no. The, contact sport, the, it, it, the, the yellow cards wouldn't have stopped. Sport. The yellow cards wouldn't have stopped the four goals, though. It didn't it matter. Have, it it would have stopped, stopped the four goals. I, I, I agree. I agree. I agree. There was a couple of fouls, especially there was one in the, a get on Madison in the first half that should have been a booking. So I agree that, that I, I agree with you. I don't think that had any impact on the direction that the game went in. If, for instance, Bruno Gomares had punched one of your players and didn't get sent off, I would have brought it up because they should have then gone down to 10 men. It would have a huge implications on the game. So that's why I didn't bring it up. But fair, fair play. Listen, they probably should have had a few bookings. I don't think it would have had the reason why it's not been a talking point today is I think it had no bearing on the direction that the game went in personally. Um, just because I've, I've got a shoot uh, this year says it's a huge red flag when Eric Dyer reveals this week that Anz does not do any tactical work in training in modern day football that puts any team at a disadvantage even before a ball is kicked. I'd love oh, to get the context of what he means by no tactical work. Is that tactical work in terms of a, what the other team's going to do? Yeah, he said all he does is do his, his system, but I wouldn't listen to anything Eric Dyer yeah, says because yeah. he's bitter because he's shit. <laughs> yeah, so yeah I don't true. Care what he says. true. True. Listen, everyone who's tuned in, I want to thank you all. Remember, we are sponsored today by Brickhouse Nutrition, an amazing company based out of Texas in the U in in the US. Pure, their pure yeah. organic superfood range. What you have to do is check this out. It makes your heart stronger, your organs stronger, your, your digestion digestion better. All the organic fruits and, and vegetables and uh, herbs that are used in making these are amazing. There's a description on the website that shows you exactly what each one does for your body and how it improves you. And it is suitable for you and your family. It's not a, uh, a supplement to make you big in the gym or anything like that. It's purely for nutrients, micronutrients, and improving your general health. You get a 15% discount by using promo code SQUAD. Scan the QR code on the screen or click on the link in our description below. But go and check it out. It's amazing. And unlike a lot of the crud you get in the, the health shops that are full of sugars, factory-made chemicals, adjectives, everything else, you get none of that from Brickhouse Nutrition. It is all 100% organic. So go and check it out now. 
Until next time, people, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And well done, Newcastle.